What is going on tonight? This is JD coming out to another video for Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins Lightship. Subscribe before I get started. This is uh, Tuesday morning, not Monday morning. I had one filmed yesterday, and I got a phone call right in the middle of it from my boss and had to stop. Um, the way my schedule works this week, I have a lot of morning shifts. If I work in the morning and in the evening, I hang out and spend time with my wife. If I work in the, in the evening, I, I work, I don't, my wife works, so I have time next to do the podcast or the do this uh, video. So, Dallas Redskins. Um, it's going to be the same song and dance. I, I'm going to comment on some things first. I, I love my team. I'm going to be honest, though. I hate our fan base. I'm not going to lie. I can't stand the rest of our fans. Our fans are some of the worst fans that we have. They We, have, we overreact. Um, not we, not me, but some overreact. Some, like, for some reason they think that starting a rookie quarterback <clears throat> with a not great offensive line, with a not great running game, with rookie receivers, is going to somehow win us both these games that we've lost. Any, anyone who knows football can watch our games and, and tell exactly what is costing us our games. Anyone who knows football, it, this just shows me a lot of people don't know football. Everyone's saying that Jay Gruden gets fired. Listen, if you guys, if you're gonna fire Jay Gruden this early in the season, it that means the season's done. There's no, you're not gonna fire someone, bring someone in, and all of a sudden we're a playoff team. We're gonna fire Jay Gruden. It's gonna be at the end of the season or when the season's done. It's gonna be near the end of the season when the season's done. It's not gonna be in the uh, two games in. Okay, if anything's gonna happen, we're gonna move coordinators and things like that because they got to try that first before they they wholesale and 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 hit the reset button on everything. Everyone wants to fucking panic every time. And, it, and then when I hear the unintelligent fans, the ignorant fans that we have, saying that Case Kim needs benched. And what, how the fuck does this Case Kim need bench? I'm sorry. I'm starting to get, like, really irritated just in talking about this. How the fuck does Case Keenum need benched whenever Case Keenum has over 600 yards of passing, he has five touchdowns, zero interceptions. Now, I know some were close to one was close today for sure. And one was close last week, but he still doesn't have any interceptions. And his completion percentage is 69%. So he's completing 70% of his passes. He has almost 300 yards a game passing, and he's averaging two and a half touchdowns a game. <clears throat> if we'd have that those those fucking numbers last year, we'd have been uh, nine and zero going in whenever Alex Smith got injured. If we'd have had those kind of numbers last year, we'd have been nine and zero when Alex Smith got injured. That is fucking ridiculous that fans want think that that is the problem with our team right now. I'm going to get into the problem with our team, and anyone who watched the game is going to know what it is, and you're going to be 100% correct. The problem with our team right now, the problem with the Washington Redskins, has nothing to do with the offense. The offense is not the problem. The only There's one part of the only phrase that. One part of the offense is the problem. That's the O-line. The O-line, last week it was Morgan Moses. This week it was a collective effort, but mainly Brandon Sheriff. What's sad is a lot of the predictions that we had as Washington fans about how the season was going to go. We said this, this team will be able to run the football. They're, going to, they're not going to be able to pass. The defense is going to be solid. The offensive line is going to be horrible. They're, the left side of the line is going to get our quarterback killed. That's why you don't want to start Haskins. Yada, yada, yada. That's not the case. It is a tale, different tale of tape right now. Is our offensive line is actually not doing bad. The right side's doing worse. They're holding a lot. Um, where our veteran or two solid veterans are, and I don't like I don't like where Moses, but he's a, he's a solid player. He's solid, but I just don't like him because he holds a lot. Um, and uh, Eric Flowers, that once said, he shouldn't be on our team. Is playing. I won't say great, but he's 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 adequate. He's good. Um, Donald Penn, who we just brought in, is, is playing adequate. He's good. And Brandon Sheriff had like four holding calls today. Morgan Moses had, I think, had one or two. It, it's it's ridiculous how, and last year this has really killed us. This year we actually have a chance because we have a quarterback that will actually sling the football. Um, but we have guys, stalled, we have draw, uh, we have um, drives just being stalled. Like Adrian Peterson had at least a couple carries where he got like at least five or six yards and he got called back. And then we can't go to Adrian Peterson again because it's first and 20. And like uh, Jay Gruden said, and, then, and this is not a knock on Adrian Peterson. This is the style of play he is. He's an older back, and when, when he came to the league, the older back, the style of play he had 
was what was in it. And that's the downhill running, north and south running, and Jay Gruden, I, I get Jay Gruden, I'm not knocking him for this, this is a valid point, it's a valid opinion. His valid opinion is this, that, you know, with, 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 with um, Peterson in, the offense is more predictable, um, there's less things they can do, and it makes the defense, uh, it makes the def- it, it kind of limits the offense and, and gives the defense more flexibility. You can't run a lot of misdirection with, with Bader and Peterson. So I get why that is, but that the only thing wrong with the offensive, the offense is the offensive line, and it's not that they're not blocking well; they're actually doing pretty decent at blocking. It's the fact that they're holding, they're getting penalties, and that's what's slowing our drives, and that's the issue that Washington Redskins are having right now on the offensive side. Other than that, the offense, I have no issue with the offense. When, when we're putting up, we're averaging 24 points a game. That's the average amount of points that the Redskins are putting up right now. 24 points a game. You put up 24 points a game in the NFL this this day and age, you should win games. There's a lot of teams right now that the way that they're uh, not scoring and the way they're giving up points, we're going to beat a lot of teams this year. So I'm not hitting the panic button. I'm not. I'm not going to hit the panic button yet. I said we're going to go two and three. So I plan on us beating the Bears and beating the Giants and losing to the Patriots, and we're two and three. That's exactly what I planned on doing this year. Realistically, I, I had my uh, great ambitions of being able to beat the Eagles and the Cowboys. And the best case scenario is we can go uh, four and one. That is the best case scenario. But right now, like I, I said, realistically, if we get out of the first five games, two and three, we're we're not in bad shape because the middle part of our schedule is squishy. Um, we legit have a lot of teams that we can beat right in the middle of our schedule: the Jets, the Bills. Dolphins are right in the middle of our schedule. Right there, it's going to be three wins. We're going to all but sweep the, except for the Patriots. So we're going to, <laughs> going to all but sweep the uh, AFC East. That's all there is to it. And then we play, um, we play, we play the Bears, play Detroit. We, the way the Vikings look, we can beat the Vikings for sure. Um, Green Bay is a little bit tougher than I anticipated. So, so there's a lot of games in there that we can definitely win. So everyone needs to stop just panicking. The way everything's looked so far, there's a handful of games that we can win. Because we can move the ball better than we anticipated. We just got to make sure our defense gets the right to ship. And I don't think our defense is loaded with bad players. I think the scheme has been bad. And this is where the biggest part of our issue right now, with, with the, my issue right now with the team, and the, the, the reason why we're losing is the defense. Back-to-back weeks, this defense has given up 31 points and 32 points. Okay? Back-to-back weeks, this team has given up. Uh, last week, they were... Excuse me. They gave up eight for ten on third down conversions in the second half. I don't remember the first half numbers. I think the conversion rate was like thirty percent, which is why we were be- we were pecking smacking the uh, Eagles in the first half. Um, this this week, seven of eleven on third down conversions, which is the sixty four percent. Eight of t- or last week, the average was like sixty five percent. So we're giving up sixty four percent conversion rates on third downs. That is atrocious. We're not going to beat anyone doing that. We're not. There's no way in hell you're going to beat anyone in the National Football League letting teams convert um, basically two out of every three third downs. Okay? Um, it's not going to happen. You need to get you got to get teams like one out of every three because then you can get them off the field. It's just not going to happen. And that's the problem we're having right now. It's not like we're – and honestly, you can look at other stats and say those are issues too, like yardage. I mean, if you get off field on third down, the yard just fixes itself. Um, also, like, if you look at running, uh, people look at rushing yards and like, oh, time of possession, time of possession, rushing yards. That's not the problem right now. Um, if you fix the third down conversion, time of possession fixed itself. Rushing yards aren't killing us. If there was a direct correlation, I, if you watch the game, like I, I, like I watch every game, I watch every snap of every play, I watch it twice. I watch the game twice by now. You can watch the game, and you would not think if you just watched the game, you wouldn't say, "No, this, I don't think the running game beat us. It's third downs, play, clearly third downs. Running game, I think they got over 100 yards rushing on us, and that's the same thing last week. There's times last week, last year, where it definitely felt the running game was beating us. It was grinding us down. I've not felt that this year. What is grinding us down is and this is how I know our defense is good enough to do it. The problem is scheme. There's times when we have um, our defense get to third and ten. 
which means we had to stop them on first and second down. Okay? Two out of three. <coughs> We're just not stopping them on fourth down, or on third down. When you're getting your defense, and the, and the team has had third and seven, third and long, third and eight, third and ten, third and fifteen, and you have a lot of those conversions, that means your defense is still doing something right. The problem with our defense is they're not doing it right on third downs. So that's what they have to fix. And here's my, my solution. I hate to call for someone's job two weeks into the season, but Greg Minuski is not bringing any pressure. They are there is a lack of aggression with our defense. They are laying back and letting teams just do whatever they want. They're letting teams get into their routes. They're letting teams get comfortable. Um, they're not bringing pressure. So Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz are just um, wait, sitting back there and they're running around scrambling until until it's like a, a <clears throat> jailbreak and then the, 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 the conventional routes are not taken care of. And then the guys just run around and they get the ball. They get the ball thrown to them. They convert first downs. Um, Josh Norman's got beat again <clears throat> on a deep ball. That's uh, three deep balls we've got beaten on so far this year. We take away all three of those deep balls. I mean, we take away all three of these deep balls. We beat the Eagles, and we beat we we're close to beating the Cowboys. It's just all these things that you can you can chalk it up to one stat and it's third down conversions. If we had third down conversions down to like forty percent rather than sixty five percent. We, 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 we'd be winning both of our games right now. That's what it comes down to. And this was supposed to be the, the, the strongest part of our team was our defense. It retained most of, most of the guys from last year. We added a couple good pieces. So we didn't add bums, nothing like that. So that's the problem we're having right now is we didn't, we're just not playing good defensively. And everyone's going to – I mean, I, I'm curious what people think. Uh, I, I hear I, – I really have to block out the ignorance. Everyone wanting half – I, I, I'm curious if it's like a race thing. They, they, they want the black quarterback to start early. If, you, if you're really that concerned, I mean, I want him to start too. Don't get me wrong. He looks like he's a gangbuster, man. He looks like he is the guy. He looks like he's going to be our, our franchise quarterback for years to come. But let's not rush it. If we're sucking right now, putting him in is not going to make us better. He's a rookie. Look how he looks in preseason. Okay? And I get it. The cupboard's not bare. He is going to be good. But... Do you really want to put him in right now? If, if this is the last hurrah for Jay Gruden, and it's the last hurrah for this um, uh, reign or whatever you want to call it, uh, tenure or whatever you want to call it, regime. There we go. That's a better, better word, regime. If this is the last hurrah for this regime. Do you really want to sully his um, his good name by, start, by putting him in and having him have to deal with the last reigning years of, of – because I'll tell you what, if if if, the, if this season goes to the goes to hell and and we end up being like four and twelve or something, and Jay Gruden does get fired, Jay Gruden's not gonna give a shit about Haskins. If if they put Haskins in, that's bad news because Haskins is gonna get. I'm telling you, he's gonna get. I don't want him to get injured. Let's get let's get through this season. For all we know, Case Keenum, and they're gonna turn up turn it around. Well, I mean, I know this is called Redskins rant. Because when I first started this, I was ranting about Kirk Cousins. That's honestly why I first started this. I started this channel. Actually, I'm my old channel, J.D. Plank. Uh, it's just my name, James Plank. And my old channel, I started a, 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 a video called The Scrotal Ruskin Fan, where I was bitching and moaning because we had to win one game. We were, uh, it was 8-6-1, uh, and one, and we had to or 7-7. Uh, Seven and one, and all we had to do was win one game, to get to eight, seven, and one, and make the playoffs. And the Giants come out; they don't even start a starter, start, start a lot of starters. I, I think they started Eli Manning, whatever, and they beat us. And Kirk Cousins could get like a hundred yards passing in that game. And the only thing that kept us in the game is we had a receiver named Pierre Garcon who, you know, had it, got us pumped up. The defense held him like fourteen points, and Kirk Cousins couldn't put fifteen fucking points on the board. That's why this, this video started. And the video is called Redskins Rant because I was ranting about that. Now, I know right now I'm not ranting. But we have to be a little bit logical here. My point of, with Kurt was I took statistical analysis of Kurt's success. And I applied that to making an informed decision about why we didn't need the guy. And I love it because every week Kurt Cousins proves me right. Last year he proved me right. 
Um, you take Case Keenum off that team, and then you put Kirk Cousins there, and all of a sudden that team wins a lot of games or loses a lot of games. Um, and we did fine without him last year. This year, if our defense was anywhere near close to what it was last year, we'd have the same result. We'd be 2-0. We'd be, we'd, we'd be really dominating. We, we're, we're, we'd be dominating teams. But for some reason, Greg Minoski cannot adjust his scheme. There's no adjustments at halftime. And, and everyone always says that Jay Gruden doesn't make adjustments. The week one, you get, there's no adjustments to make. When your offense is playing as good as they can, what adjustments do you make? Hey, guys, keep blocking better. I mean, that's all you really say. Guys, you know, let's keep executing. And they tried. And drop passes by receivers, things like that. This week is the first week where I can see that argument. Um, execution needs to be better. Um, offense, I, I will say I watched the game at work. There was some drops. Um, I thought we did run the ball a little bit, but I can, always, I can chalk a lot of this up to uh, dumbass penalties. Guys getting holding penalties with... You know, uh, putting us at first and first and twenty, and I'm not going to blame the officials for this game. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to blame the officials on this game. Uh, I don't. I don't like doing that. Let me rephrase that. I don't like blaming officials. I think that's the cheapest thing to do is for someone to blame officials. They're professional football players. You're taught in football that you got to overcome things, and good teams overcome that. They're, for some reason, the most hated team in the NFL is the Patriots, and they never get called for holding. You know why? Because they practice not doing it. They practice not holding. They practice doing things the, the appropriate way so they don't get penalized. Because they preach that, you know, if you hold, you're going to screw over the other the other 45 guys or 55 guys on this football team. 52. I think it's 53 total roster. And they preach that. They teach it properly. And that's what needs to start being done. Who Our, our offensive line coach, Bill Callahan, is teaching something that referees used to let get away with, apparently they're not letting you do that anymore. So maybe we need to change our, our mentality on that. Maybe we need to change like how we do that um, or how we're teaching guys. Because, I mean, I mean, he's teaching Donald Penn and Eric Flowers that they're not doing it all the time. It seems to be the same two guys holding all the time. But um, I'm not going to get too much into this anymore. Uh, this is not the day that needs to be calling for people's job, but Greg Minuski is the issue, I believe. We deal with zero pressure on third downs. We get no pressure on Dak. If you watch the Carson, the uh, Eagles game today, yesterday, or yesterday um, Sunday night, the Eagles lost to the Arizona, or, uh, Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons brought pressure on Carson Wentz. Doing so, Carson Wentz threw two interceptions. He got flustered. He wasn't throwing the ball downfield as much. Now, um, and I'm pretty sure when when Dak Prescott plays a team that brings pressure, he will throw the ball. The first time we brought a little bit of pressure, the first time we got in in, in um, Dak Prescott's face, he overthrew the ball in uh, in the pick. Uh, we had a pick on it, so we got to bring some pressure. We don't have the talent to just lock up with everyone and just rely on our pass rush. Okay, we probably do have a good pass rush. We're missing Jonathan Allen. Montez Sweat's still a rookie. Kerrigan's getting old, so we got to mix it up a little bit. We got to do something that's going to help that out. So I'm looking for the light. I'm looking to turn to go to the uh, post office, and I'm just waiting for it to turn. So yeah, there it is. Okay. And that's basically where, where where we're at. We didn't do any of those things. Atlanta did a lot of those things. They brought pressure. They blitzed. They made Carson Wentz get rid of the ball quickly. The reason why you make Carson Wentz get rid of the ball quickly because if Carson Wentz is if it's third and 15, and he has to throw the ball 15 yards, if you bring six guys and just cover everyone man-to-man, -man, he has to get rid of the ball quickly. I would rely more on our tackling ability to make sure he doesn't get a first down than rely more on our, um, <clears throat> than, than have to rely more on our uh, offensive, or our, our defense to cover a guy for 15 yards, and the guy have no pressure on him whatsoever. So, um, I'm, not, I'm not getting too much into this anymore. I'm, I'm getting really, like, flustered with the thought of the fact that our defense, I would rather our defense go for broke and blitz every play and force them to get rid of the ball quick and we lose that way than to sit back like a bunch of little bitches and just let them keep doing what they're doing. All right. This is uh, this is JD. This is Redskins Rant. Hail to the Redskins. I love my team. I just want to see my team move good. And um, I predicted, like I said, 
We're gonna we're gonna win two out of these first five. I think we're gonna win the Bears and the Giants. Those are the two realistic ones we could win. I think we could we could beat the Patriots. You never know, um, but I don't think we are. I think that we're gonna two and five, which is where I said we need to be. And then we go into the squishy part of our schedule. Now, if we can fix the defense between now and then, and our offense stays where it is, and we get better because we're gonna add Jordan Reed back, we're gonna get Jerry Skyce back eventually, so on and so forth. I'm, I'm very confident we can still turn this around. So I know like my my channel was made out of vitriol and anger, but I'm just being logical right now. Logically, it makes no sense to panic. Let's not panic. Let's put ourselves in a situation to be successful and fix what we need to, okay? Hail to the residents. See ya.